Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the caching service that's built into Maverick's server. Now the caching service uh, allows you to actually take things that you would normally download from the Mac App Store and create a copy of those updates and those downloads on your server so that all of your clients in your network will then go to your server to get those updates instead of uh, downloading their own separate updates onto each of your different Mac computers. So this way it saves bandwidth uh, inside your network and allows you to only have to download it once and then from there everybody gets, your, uh, gets their updates from your server. Now the caching service does integrate with the Mac App Store and so anything that you would download from the Mac App Store is what would be caught with the caching service. Now in a previous screencast we talked about software update and talked about uh, using that uh, to get your updates and so what I thought I'd do is compare uh, the caching server with software update. Now one of the things you can do is you can run these two services simultaneously. You don't have to only run one run one or the other. You can run them together, so I just wanted to let you know that. But let's talk about the differences between these two. Uh, the first is that software update only caches Mac updates, whereas the caching service will cache not only Mac updates, but also any purchases you have on the Mac App Store, both for Macs and iOS devices. So anything that you've pur purchased there would be cached. Uh, also, software update uh, will allow you to manually configure uh, your client, so you have to actually manually configure each client to use it. Uh, and we talked about how to do that in the software update uh, screencast that I did. But with the caching server, all you have to do is be on the same network as the server that has the caching uh, service running on it. So there's no configuration for your clients. They will automatically look for a caching server on your network and then tap into it uh, to look for their updates and downloads. So that's kind of nice that it's got zero uh, configurability. Now the other thing is that software update will download all of your updates when it's fired up whereas the caching server will only download updates when someone has requested it. So when a, uh, one of your client machines uh, downloads a, pro, a program or when it requests an update, that update will be downloaded and saved on the server. It won't just automatically download everything that you've got. So it does manage it that way. Uh, software update though does allow you to have more client management so you can determine which things are downloaded and which things are enabled whereas in the caching service pretty much everything that you've got uh, on the Mac App Store that you've purchased uh, will be cached and so there isn't any client management on that it just works that way. So one of the ways that I could conceive of you kind of using these two together is you might want to use software update for some of your legacy software uh, things that uh, might not be in your Mac App Store so if you've got any Macs that are uh, you know, under 10.8, you would use the software update. And then you can use the caching service for everything else. And uh, I would also use the software update service in a managed mode. That way you don't have duplicates of some of these updates uh, across your uh, two services. And that will make it a little easier to manage. So as we look here at the caching service, it's a pretty simple service when you look at it. And you can see here, uh, right now we're offline because I haven't turned the service on yet. Uh, but we've got a few things that we can do with the settings. Uh, the first thing is, is we can set the volume where we want the cached uh, data to live. So in other words, uh, the downloads of the apps themselves that will be cached, where do we want that to be? And so if you just click edit over here, you can actually choose the volume of any volumes you have attached uh, for where you want that data to live. So I'm going to put that on, uh, on my Drobo and just say choose. It says, you sure you want to do that? It's going to change the location. I'll say continue. And so now it says there's existing cache because I've done this before. And it says, please delete or move the data and try again or choose a different volume. So if you've ever used the caching service before and turned it off and turned it back on, uh, you will get this error and so you'll have to move that information um, so that uh, you can start over. So we'll say OK. And so I'm going to have to delete that to move it. But just wanted to show that you can uh, set it up so that it is on an, on an external volume. Now the other thing you can do is you can set the cache size. So you can set the limit of how much cache you want on your server. Do you want to just have unlimited so that every update just keeps downloading? Or do you want to limit it so that you limit how much space that you're using up? So I'm going to slide this down and you can see as you slide it you can kind of set the limit uh, of cache uh, that you have on there. And so I'm just going to set it, uh, let's just set it at 30 and leave it right there. Uh, but you can set it for whatever you want. So depending on your space, you can grow into it if you want to, uh, or you can uh, just set it for unlimited. It's up to you. Now, you can say only cache content for local networks. And so again, uh, that's if you've got you know various subnets and things like that, you can cache across those. Uh, I'm just going to leave it for local networks for right now, because uh, at home, that's the best way to do it for me.
Uh, and then down here, it'll show your usage, and it'll show whether your cash is, uh, how much cash is being used or not. And so you'll be able to see it by color coding down here, very similar to what you see with iOS devices. So blue is your Mac apps, uh, the purple there is your iOS apps, and you've got books in orange, and you've got other in green. And so it will, uh, it will basically cache all of the different things that you can buy at these different stores so that you don't have to download them again. So uh, it really is. It's, it's a nice service. It's a pretty convenient one. Uh, if you get to the point where you don't want the cache on there, you want to start over, you can just click reset and it'll actually reset all the cache and allow you to actually start over. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this uh, volume here and get this to uh, where I want to store it. And then I'll come back and turn the service on and you'll see how it works. Okay, here I am back on my server. I've got everything set up for the Drobo. I just had to go and delete a file. Uh, if you want to know where um, the caching service actually sets up for its downloads, uh, if you go into the Finder, uh, what it'll do is it'll create a folder on that volume called Library, Server, and then you have Caching in here. And then basically when you download your caches, it'll, it'll end, up, end up adding that information in there for you. Uh, so what I had is I had this set up from before when I had done it with my previous server, so I just had to delete this folder and start over. Uh, so it's a good catch. I mean, it does catch some of those things to make sure that uh, everything runs smoothly. So I just wanted to show you where that was located. So what we're going to do now is let's just throw the switch to start the service. And you can see it starts really quickly. It says everything's available. So all of our local network will uh, automatically use the service. You can see I've got nothing in here yet because nothing's been cached. But the service is up and running. I've got the green light uh, in both spots. And so we're up and running. So now let's take a look at how this might work in practice. So if I just pull up uh, the Mac App Store here for a minute, and uh, what I can do is just choose a, um, you know, choose a, an application to run and just see what happens. So let's just uh, let's just download this, uh, you know, Unibox here. Let's just download that program. So I'm going to install that, and so it's going to download it and it's going to install it on my uh, computer and put that uh, in place there. Now, what I can do is come back here, and what's going to happen is it's going to take uh, a little bit of time for it to cache. It's not going to show it right away. So what I'm going to do is download some more uh, apps and things like that, and then I'll show you what it looks like on the screen once all of those things have been downloaded. Okay, here we are back in the caching service. I've downloaded uh, various items. I downloaded the Mac software I downloaded has shown up here. You can see we've got 17 megabytes for that. Uh, I downloaded an app on my iPhone on the network, and here's the uh, iOS app taking up 31.8 megabytes. And then I downloaded a book uh, in iBooks as well, 6.2 megabytes. It took up that space. So you can see how this works. Now, in order to see the changes, uh, what you need to do is just basically kind of go out of the service like this and then come back in, and then it will re kind of calibrate itself and then show you the different changes. So if you don't see the changes right away, you do need to go in and out of the service to see it. Uh, what you do see here is you see how much cache of what I've uh, allocated is used. Of the 25 gigabytes uh, used, I've only used 55 megabytes. So you can kind of chart that right there and get a feel for whether you're getting close to your cap or not. You can always increase the amount of space that you use uh, as time goes on as well. So that kind of gives you a feel for how that works. And again, like I said, it works really nice. It's got a nice visualization on there. And like I said, zero configuration. It works right out of the box once you set it up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.